Well, welcome, Heritage of Faith family. We're so glad that you tuned in tonight, and, and I hope you're staying warm and safe, and, and I believe that God has something extraordinary for each one of our lives tonight. As we, as we begin tonight, I want to remind you of a scripture uh, that I talked about on Sunday, and it was in Psalms 118, verse 24, and it says, This is the day the Lord has made. I, we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Let's say it again. This is the day... The Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember, we're, we can rejoice in this day and we can be glad in this day because we know that our life is built upon nothing else but Jesus Christ. We know that Jesus is the foundation. Jesus is the one that we're resting our lives upon. We know that Jesus is the one that refreshes us and strengthens us. And, and our prayer tonight for you is that you will be refreshed in the presence of the Lord, that you'll be refreshed in a time of worship. We believe that the Holy Spirit will just, will just come into your room, your car, wherever you might be, and strengthen you. We believe as the word comes forth, it's going to bring strength to you. It's so good to know that no matter where we might be, when we come together in unity and we hear the word of God and we worship God, that he just has the ability to just lift us up. And that's our heart tonight, is that you would just be lifted up tonight. You'd be lifted up into his presence, that you would be lifted up and encouraged in your spirit, that the joy of the Lord would just fill your heart and fill your home, that the peace of God would surround you in an extraordinary way. So let's, let's worship him tonight. Let's worship him tonight. Let's give him glory tonight. Let's open our hearts to all that he desires to speak into us tonight. And let's take a moment and let's just give him praise. Let's give him worship. Have your way tonight. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in our time together. And we're so grateful for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Danny.
We want the anointing, Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. We want it, Lord. We want it, Lord. We give you glory tonight. Right where you are at home, let's sing this together. He's Christ alone, cornerstone. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. He's Christ alone, cornerstone. The Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak, made strong in the same.
as we prepare for the word tonight, prepare your hearts to receive. Open your spirits. Hear what the man of God and the woman of God is bringing to us tonight. That will be life changing. That will be life changing to us. We give glory to God. Receive the word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Thank you, Father. Romans tells us who all, whoever calls, calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He is Lord. Father, I thank you for your anointing. That when we call upon you, you answer us and show us great and mighty things. That when we call upon the Lord, it said that we shall be saved. We call upon you tonight. We call upon you tonight, and I thank you as we call upon you. I thank you for your manifested presence that's working, that's manifesting. Hallelujah. If you have a pain in your lower uh, left side of your bag, just place your hand on that, on that spot right there. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the anointing. For the anointing. We call upon the Lord. He is Lord. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that healeth thee. We thank you. We thank you that you are the one that heals us. I thank you for healing, flowing, healing, flowing into every physical body right now. I command the healing power, the presence, the manifested presence of God to quicken their bodies. I command wherever there's pain, where there's pain in that lower back right now, it has to go. It has to go. It has to go right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen those ligaments, strengthen those muscles. I thank you, hallelujah, that where there might be a pinched nerve, where it's something that's been, 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 been hurt or, or, or something that's been, um, uh, that there's a blockage, there's something going on there, I, that it would be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Migraine headaches, you cease right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory Just place your, place your hands Glory right here God. on your head. Place your Hallelujah. hands right here. If you've had, had migraine headaches, place your hands right where, where it's hurting. Oh, Father, I, I, I command the anointing of God, the anointing Glory. of God to come Glory. upon them right now. Glory. Right Glory. now. Glory. Thank I thank you, you for Jesus. proper blood flow. I thank you for proper function, proper function. Yeah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Anointing, anointing, yeah. anointing flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone that you have, a, have an issue with your equilibrium. It's, a, it's almost like you're, you, you, you're losing your balance. Hallelujah. I command you to come into rest. I command you to come into balance. That's it. Amen. Yeah, and it's because of an inner ear infection. I command that, 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 yeah. that ear infection. I command that, that fluid to dry up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. Hallelujah. He's risen from the dead. He is Lord. Hallelujah. He's Lord over whatever situation you're facing right now. He is Lord. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you're flowing into Vic Boone's body right now. And I thank you that you're strengthening him. I thank you that muscles and ligaments, hallelujah, are being stronger day by day, by day, day by day, moment by moment. Vic, I declare that you are strong. You're strong in the Lord. I, I declare, Michelle Moon, I thank you that you're, you're becoming strong. Your immune system is strong. I thank you for Tasha, that your immune system is strong, that you, you are, you, you, hallelujah. I thank you that, 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 that you are, you are walking. Walking, you, every single person, hallelujah, is walking in supernatural recovery. That's it. Supernatural Amen. recovery. Amen. Yeah, there's a, there, there's a natural recovery, but I thank you that the, the process is being sped up in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Supernatural recovery. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. He is Lord. He is Lord. Danny, can we, can we sing that again? He is Lord. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he Father, thank you that your word is alive and sharper than a two-edged sword. That's it. Thank you that, Lord, let our words be like the good shepherd's words. As we are under shepherds over this house, Father, I thank you that we yield to the good shepherd and we yield to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And if the good shepherd's words, according to John chapter 6, were spirit and life. Right. Yeah. Let us as under shepherds, Father, let our words be spirit and life. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Father, for just um, that Annette you. and I would be in unity tonight. That yes, we yield to you, Lord. As we release the things that you place in each one of our hearts, that you would unify. What, Thank you, Jesus. What uh, needs? It's coming. Going to come out of our hearts tonight. That you would make it a, a. You would make it a word in season. Thank you, Father. That would build up. 
our lives and that would build up thank you, this church body. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for Miracle Wednesdays. Ah, <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Mm. Mm. So, Father, we yeah. submit and yield ourselves to you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, amen. God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to let Pastor Annette start off and share what's in her heart, and, and uh, maybe you, she'll just take the whole time. We'll see, you know. Um, but I believe uh, whatever it is, it's going to be something that is uh, going to be impacting. And Thank amen. You, so where, wherever you are, give, give a hand to Pastor Annette. Amen. Ooh, glory amen. to God. God is good. He is so good all the time. He is good. <laughs> oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Um, if you're not coming on Monday nights to corporate prayer, you're missing out. Um, I just want to invite you every time that there's, there's a time to pray corporately, there's a time to come together as the ecclesia, that means you and we're missing you. So um, Monday nights, if you'll come out. Well, I want to start out in, actually this past Monday, Pastor brought up, 2 Thessalonians 1.11, and I haven't been able to get it out of my, out of my spirit, just reading it and, and meditating on it. And that's the thing about the word. You have to meditate it. You have to, you have to read it over and over. And, and first of all, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you because he is the teacher. He is the teacher. If there's one thing that I learned um, as a child... Um, before I opened my Bible, the one thing was is to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to reveal things to you. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the teacher tonight and that you are using our vocal cords and you are using us to, um, to speak your word, to speak your heart tonight. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, I'm going to read it in a couple of translations in the Amplified um, the second part, it says, we pray that our God with power, with power, I, if you've ever heard me preach before, I like P words. So, with power may complete in your every particular work of faith. It is his power at work in your faith, causing it to work, right? It will be a particular work that your faith will do, right? Whatever it is that you're believing for, it's going to be a particular work that God has called you to do by faith. A specific anointed divine work that your faith has his power working in it, in it, in order for it to be complete. Um, I'm going to read it in the, in the New Living Translation. And I love to read it in different translations because it... Um, can make a little bit more sense. I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians 1.11 in the NLT version. So we keep on praying for you, Paul is saying, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all things your faith prompts you to do. I told pastor, I said, I read that this morning and I, that word prompt stuck out to me. Prompt. And I'm like, faith prompts? Faith prompts. And I'd never heard that before. I've heard compassion compels. You know, it said that Jesus, filled with compassion, was compelled, right? So um, it, it says, may he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Meaning, being ready. Faith makes you ready. Faith Whenever God calls us to do something, we need to be ready to do it, right? Prompt, quick, act as an occasion demands, um, requiring the Holy Spirit's discernment. Again, the Holy Spirit, it's his knowing, it's his power, it's his discerning that's going to make us in these times available to be prompted to act. Amen. How many, how many of y'all want to be ready to do that? Um, and as I was reading, I was led to back to chapter one, verse three. I want you to look at this because faith was seen. 
How many of y'all know faith can be seen? Um, in verse three, the second part, he says, because your faith is growing exceedingly and the love of every one of you, each toward the others is increasing and abounds. That means they were becoming unselfish. As their faith grew, as their faith grew, their love for each other grew. I thought that was interesting. I thought, wow. So it takes great faith to love. How many of y'all know that? How many of y'all know when love shows up, it changes everything? That's just like saying if, when God shows up, it changes everything, right? Because God is love. Um, and I, it made me think of Proverbs 15, 1, where it says a, a soft word, a kind word, a soothing word. What does it do? It changes everything, right? It stops a person from being angry. It stops, it, you know... So when love shows up, it's going to change things. And I'm ready. I'm ready to act in faith, act out of God's love, and watch him work mightily. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. And so and when I think of being prompt, it made me think of being prepared. Because, again, it's another P word. <laughs> You can't be prompt if you're not prepared and you can't be prompt without faith and faith works by what love and that's his power. I told, I, I was telling Justin back there in the green room, it just, it just popped in my head where it, it just popped, it just popped out of the page where it says his power at work, his power. I'm going to read that again. I want to read that. It says, we pray that our God with power may complete in your every particular work of faith. See, it's going to take God's power. It's going to take God's love in order to complete the work of faith. You know, we may think that, you know, that we're doing something great, but if you're doing it out of because you want to be seen or you want to be known, but you're not doing in the power of God, then you're not you're you're not accomplishing anything. We're in and in these days I'm ready to accomplish God's work. Here's the other thing interesting in verse 11. If you're reading in the Amplified, it says, your every particular work of faith. And then in parentheses, it says, faith, faith, which is that leaning. So faith that acts in love requires leaning of the whole human personality on God and his personality, which is love. You have to lean on God with your whole human personality, which an, another, another way of saying that would be faith gets out of here. Faith gets out of your head, okay? How many of y'all know you, to love someone, you can't love them by trying to understand them. You've got to love with God's love. You can't love some people. Some people are just unlovable. You're like, well, they're mean, they're ugly, they're rude. So that's, that's us. That's our human personality. That's our own human thinking. And it says faith is that, and I just wrote down, it requires the leaning of the whole human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and his goodness. How many of you, I, I didn't, you know, whenever I, I was reading this morning and praying and, and you know, read where faith um, prompts, I, and, and I thought, God, are you a planner? Well, yeah, he's a planner. And I'm like, okay, God, give me, give me a, a I, I, what's a name? A name of God that, that shows that he's a planner. Well, that would be Jehovah Jireh, right? Because that means he's a provider. And you can't provide if you don't have something and you're not ready to give it, right? So that tells me that God is a planner. He's a preparer. He is prompt, prompt and ready to provide. <laughs> he knows what we need and he's so ready and promptly to provide. Isn't that cool? His faith prompts us. <laughs> His faith prompts him to provide and to promptly move. So, what is it going to take on our part? What is it going to take on our part to remain in a prepared position to hear him and be prompt to do? 
What is it going to take? And I wrote down, number one, is submission. It's content, it, it is wholly submitted to him, spending quality time in prayer, in the word. How many of y'all know your faith increases as you spend time in the word, Right? And if you spend time in the word, you spend time praying. And if you start spending time praying for somebody, then all of a sudden you start loving that somebody, right? Because what does the Bible say? The Bible says to pray for those who, yeah, who despitefully use you. Pray for your enemies. You know, I used to love the scripture that talks about, you know, that um, when you love your enemies, it's like heaping coals on their head. And I used to think, yeah, set them on fire. Yeah. But that's not what that means. It doesn't mean heaping coals upon their heads to set them on fire so then they're poof, gone, you know. It means loving them, praying for them, because you're going to mine out of that love, out of that prayer, you're going to mine God out of them. You're going to bring goodness out of them. That goes back to Proverbs 15.1. A word in love softens or turns away wrath. A word in love, a soft word, well, it, it brings down what's happening. Somebody that's argue, arguing, you don't, you, you, you react in love, right? God's power, God's power is working in your faith <laughs> to complete it, to complete that work, okay? So I want to stay in that position, that position where I'm hearing him and I'm prompt to do. I'm hearing him. I'm getting filled with the word, so in submission to his authority. The second thing I wrote down is when we do that, which brings me to eliminate, we, we start to, um, I wrote down, you have to eliminate and separate to get straight. So you have to eliminate and separate to get straight, to align with God. You've got to get rid of your own opinion, get rid of distractions. It's up to us, according to James 1.21, according to James 21, that we have to get rid of those thoughts. We have to get rid of those filthy rags, actually, is, is how it says it. So number one is submission. Number two is elimination. We've got to get rid of, push it away by spending time with him, eliminate and separate ourselves to him to, in, in order to align with what he wants us to do. And it's going to take a, de a decision. It's going to take a determined stubborn. How many of y'all know how to be stubborn? I know moms know how to be stubborn. Moms know how to be stubborn. You got a stubborn child, God, God chose a stubborn mom. That's okay. God, if you have a stubborn child, then God's chosen you as a stubborn mom to be the mom for that child because <laughs> he knows you could be more stubborn. So we have to make a determined, stubborn decision that we are going to remain committed to his word, that we will be immovable in our stand on what God has called us to do. It's, I mean, it, I was thinking, like, holding on to the word of God, obviously this is, you know, we have to hold it and keep it in our heart in order that we may not sin against him, the word says. But I read, um, I read this quote. It made me think of, it made me think of being um, determined and stubborn to stand on God's word and not get rid of God's word. It said, I'll give you my gun. This was a, uh, it could have been John Wayne talking. He said, I'll give you my gun when you pry or take it from my cold, dead hands. Yeah, that's like, tell the devil, I'm not getting off this word. I'm standing on God's word. I will fulfill his plan. I will fulfill the purposes of God. I, I'm, not, I'm not backing off. And you have to make a determined decision. You're not backing off. You're going to do what God calls you to do. You're not going to move away from his word. Um, and there's got to be continuation. It's got to be something that's ongoing. It's not something that you just do one time, right? You can't just read the word one time or hear from God one time and get stuck on that and then think, okay, I'm good. I've got faith. I've got love. Because what's going to happen? There's going to be an attack immediately to test that, to test that. So there has to be a continuation, an ongoing of removing of wrong thoughts and, 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 and perspectives. There's got to be an ongoing of being submitted, ongoing of eliminating those wrong thoughts and perceptions and remaining in God's word. Um, some of us and some of y'all watching tonight have to change your belief about God and maybe others. 
I'm going to tell you what, if you change your belief about God you, and you start falling in love with him by spending more time with him, you can't love God and not love others. If you say you love God, <laughs> you can't say you hate somebody else. That's not, you can't do that because to love God is to love others. Again, how was the, the, their faith seen in Thessalonians? How was their faith seen? Verse 1, chapter 3. It says their faith was growing exceedingly because their love for one another, for each other, was increasing and abounding. That's how they could see it. That, that's how they could see that their, their faith was increasing. And I'm going to tell you what, your faith will not work. It will not work without love. It will not work. And then lastly, faith receives, and we know that. We believe what we receive when we pray, right? Faith receives. Um, that word receive is dekomai in the Greek, and it means to take quickly and readily, readily, readily. We have to be in a place where faith takes, where, um, where we receive all he's wanting to do through us. When our hearts are right and we're ready, you know, when God calls us to do something, um, I always think of, of Pastor Justin's testimony of when he came into this building for Bible school. And, you know, he came ready and prepared to pay his own deposit for his own school tuition and his own, you know, learning. But yeah, something changed. God had something else in mind. God said, take a look over there. You see those people that are they're still needing their deposit? I need you to pay their deposit. <laughs> and his response was, but I only have enough for mine, and I only have one check. He's like, that's all it's going to take is just one check. <laughs> I just need you to go pay it. So it was out of love. Love, faith prompted him to do Faith prompted him to do. And the, what was on the other? See, faith, when God provides an opportunity, that was an opportunity. It was a divine opportunity. That divine opportunity that he's calling us to move into is not just, when our hearts are right, we don't care. Yes, God, I will do it. I will do it. I will meet that need, right? Yeah, we're like, I'll sell everything. I'll do whatever it takes because first of all, faith works by love and perfect love casts out all fear. So it's like, God's going to take care of me. That's fine. I'll do it. And as a result of that obedience, as a result of that faith work, that particular, I love that he used that word particular because it tells me that God already has things planned. He already has things planned. He already has things planned. We've got to be watching with our eyes of the Holy Spirit going, okay, now, do I do it now? Do I do it now? Should I do it now? So as a result of Pastor Justin paying their deposit, there was a miracle on the other side of his obedience. And that's what, and that's what God told him. You take care of the obedience. I'll take care of the impossible. Yeah. Love is unselfish. Love is what is going to make our faith work in these last days. We, apart from it, we, there's, yeah, we're, we're like a crashing symbol. It's, you know, that's what the word says. You can, you can speak in tongues. You can prophesy, prophesy all you want. You can know the word forwards and backwards. You can quote everything in here from Genesis to Revelation. But if you don't have love, then you're not accomplishing anything. God's power is not working on your faith to complete. Amen. You ready to tag? <laughs> if you tag like this. We tag. tag. So good. And I mean, I love that. Eliminate, separate, and get straight. And um, it, it's so important that faith is, is how we live as believers. Faith, every, we do everything from a position of faith. Because we're doing it in a position of a relationship with God. And as, um, as Pastor Annette was talking, um, I, I was, this scripture came up in my heart. And I'm, I'm, I want to read this. I wasn't planning on this, to say this. But 
Uh, I believe it connects well, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, verse 12, it says, For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but we give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Wow. Now think about that. It's saying that we want, now we're, we're he, he said, we're, and he goes on, he says, I, in some translation, it's in, in the New King James, it says, we are not beside ourselves. But he was saying, look, I, I'm not saying this to really to puff, puff us up. I, I want you to know the, the difference in us and other people, knowing that what we've done and what we're doing is coming from a, a um, not an appearance of love, but it is love. Right. It's not something that we're boasting about. He says, he goes, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart meaning they're more interested in what things look like instead of coming from a heart. Because what, what, what a life of faith is all about, faith is in two places. It's in our heart and it's in our mouth. So he says, so we're not boasting about, about appearance or the way things look, but we're, it's about the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And, and really, some translations say, if we look crazy, <laughs> it, we're, we're looking crazy because... It's God. You know, there's some things that, that I believe there's a way that we can love crazy. <laughs> I believe there's a way that meaning, meaning what we can live where people is like, you know, in the natural for people, it's like, it's like, why would you give that? It's, it's yours. And why did, why would you do that? Why would you serve in a church? Why would you do this? And why would you do for that, that for those people? Or why would you be in the word of God? Why would you go to church? Whatever it is. Yes. On the outside, it, on some people, it may look crazy, but from the faith in my heart, it is it, my, the faith in my heart is causing me to respond to God and respond to other people in love. No, he says this, he goes, if we're beside ourselves, it's for God. Or if we are of a sound mind, it's for you. Then what does it say? For the love of Christ compels us. Wow. So faith works by love. And so that faith and that love is going to compel. So just kind of uh, take this, not, not in a different direction, but continue to add on what Pastor Annette was saying, that this life of faith, as, as Thessalonians was talking about, that this work of faith with <clears throat> power yes. to eliminate, she said, eliminate things, yes. separate, yes. eliminate, eliminate from where? Eliminate from your heart. Yeah, right. uh, and, and this was this was big in my heart. Um, as I was preparing to, to share tonight is, is really just as, as I close out and, and kind of connecting these thoughts together that our hearts need to be single. Uh, go, to, go to Acts chapter, actually, let's go to Matthew chapter five. And I, th this do, does tie in to the love aspect. Matthew chapter five. <clears throat> because faith is, is, comes out of our heart and love is what's going to come out of our heart. And when I say heart, I'm not talking about our, our blood pump. I'm talking about our reborn spirit, the center, the, the, our, our, our new creation man. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And, 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 and so, so the thing is, is we need to eliminate things that are keeping, one, maybe, maybe keeping our faith from becoming stagnant. Maybe eliminate, maybe things that are, that are undermining our faith. Maybe bad reports, maybe uh, negative influences, maybe um, uh, wrong thoughts. Those things are in our hearts and we may need to eliminate those things that, that will cause, uh, cause our faith to fro flow freely. For love to flow freely. I, I don't know about you, but I'm out, for, uh, I'm out for no blockages in my life. How about you? Now in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, it says this, Blessed 
are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. They will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. And the word pure means clean and it means clear. Blessed are the hearts that are clean and clear. For they shall see God. So often we have an issue with seeing God because all we can see is everything else. But when our hearts are pure, meaning pure, meaning it, it has one fa- it has one focus, pure. There's no, if you have pure water, then there's no contamination. You may have water. Now you, you can, we, we've gone to Africa and, and, and been a part of projects where they put in water wells because the water that's currently ha- they have or they drink from is contaminated water. It's not something clean, it's not something clear, and it's not something that's profitable. But yet you put in the right, the right uh, filter system and you put, in the, you, put, you put water down into a well deep enough that's deep enough beyond the contaminations, then, then what happened is you're able now to pull up something that's clean, something that's clear, and something that doesn't have contamination. So what Pastor Annette is saying, that, that we have to come into this place where we operate in this faith that is a work of power, but it's this heart that is over overflowing with God that's overflowing with love and and we're getting eliminating things that are hindering our faith from being productive blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God so eliminate anything and everything that is hindering your focus on God that's hindering your ability to submit your heart to God. Now, there's this, there's this love theme, the thing, this faith and love, I, I believe that we're, that I believe the, the Spirit of God is getting across tonight. So let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And let's see what this looks like lived out. In a New Testament church. Now we know that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that um, that what Joel had prophesied was being fulfilled. We know that Peter stood up and he preached. Three thousand got saved. He declared and talked about the promise of the Holy Spirit. Um, And then the church was birthed. And it says this about the church. In verse 46 of Acts 2 it says, So continuing daily with one accord... In the temple. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking a bread from house to house. Now this not, not was what I want to say. But just this continuing daily. You know even this thought continuing daily is kind of foreign to our understanding. But what I see here is, is I see a group of people that had hearts with one primary focus. So they did this and they, 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 with breaking of bread from house to house. Now listen, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Wow. So this, this, this New Testament church, they were, they were a, a people of faith filled with the Holy Ghost and yet there was this um, prompting. Pastor Nett talked about a prompting. They were prompted to be in this house continually. They were prompted to go from house to house. They were prompted to eat their bread, partake of their bread with gladness. Wow, there was a joy. They, they counted a, they were glad of heart. They had a joy about this. Why? Because their hearts weren't contaminated. Their hearts were pure, totally focused on God. And, and I want you to see that, that there was, why was there a gladness of heart? Because there was 
a love present. Amen. That's right. Their faith is what calls them to, to go daily to the house of God. Their faith is what calls them to pursue and go from house to house. Their faith was what was causing them to break bread. Their faith is what was causing them to, to gather and eat and gather one with another. And the love of God was, was building and growing and increasing in such an amazing way. And it said they did this. They ate with gladness of heart. Gladness, and, and it said simplicity, simplicity of heart. Yeah. The King James, I believe, says, um, well, thank you, Father, uh, singleness of heart. Right. Some translations call it sincerity of heart. Yeah. If you have a, a, sincere, a sincere heart, meaning you have one motive, yeah. you don't have other motives. You're not doing it with a motive of a, a heart of hypocrisy. You're not doing it with a motive and a heart to get something. You're, you're not doing it with, with uh, trying to uh, ga gain something from someone. But it's all just this pure heart. And I believe that's where, that's where I, I believe God is getting us to in our walk of faith. Is this, the, the, this prompted to live by faith. This prompted to walk in love. And this prompted to pursue God. And it being, it being the primary focus of our lives. Now, it's interesting that this word singleness of heart here, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So this word simplicity or singleness means smooth. Smooth heart. Gladness and simplicity. Now, the, there's a picture, you know, you know, the Greek, when they, the, the Greek words, when it would give a particular word and then it, in the, the, the description, it will get, get, say the word, use the, the word IE, which means an example of something. And it's an example of a smooth road. So, some of the same picture is a road without obstacles and a road without rocks or stones. So when it says that they, that they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking a bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Meaning their hearts didn't have rough edges. Their hearts weren't, their hearts weren't holding back of giving out. Their hearts weren't stony ground. Their hearts were smooth. That means they eliminated things. And this is how they were prompted to live their lives. Smooth. Another thing I, that, that connected in praying, and it's another word connected that to me was you know, the, the, you know, gladness and simplicity of heart, smooth. And I, and I, and I was thinking that just the word easy came up. And, and that, that connected my thinking to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, where Jesus says, Come unto me, all that are heavy laden, and what I will give you rest. He says, Take my yoke upon you. And because it's easy, my yoke will give you rest. And he says, why? Because it is my yoke is easy. Yes. My yoke is easy. And, and, and some of you may have heard me teach on this. And this just wasn't about this was just as much as the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. The yoke of a rabbi was their teaching. What was pr Jesus's primary teaching? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what love your neighbor as yourself. So what is he saying? He's saying, take my yoke. Take my teaching. Take, take, take what, what, he's saying, take what controls me. Yes. Said, a yoke does what? A yoke would control the oxen. oxen. So, so he's saying, take my yoke. Take what controls me. Yes. 
Take what controls me. Take what's guiding my life. Take what's what, what, how I'm living my life. Take what, 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 how I'm, I'm pursuing God. Take my life of faith and my life of love. And, why? Because it's easy. So we have to eliminate things that are causing confusion. It was simplicity of heart. Let's eliminate the things that are bringing confusion. Let's eliminate the things that are, are, are making, making things hard and confusing and trying to figure things out. Let's bring things back to this, this, this life of simplicity in our hearts. Hallelujah. And I believe as we do these things, we're going to see a work of faith with power. We're going to see greater works. We're going to see the church greater unified. We're going to see the glory of God fall in our lives. We're going to get, hear his voice in ways we've never heard his voice before. But it's this life of faith that's working by love. But it's eliminating things. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. Some other things, but I, I, I think I just, I just want to give just an um, illustration that keeps coming up in my heart. Oh, what this, what does this heart look like in a person's life? I think I see, I guess the story I just saw in my heart, and I'll tell this quick, is, is the story of Zacchaeus. You know, an old song that, you know, we little, we little man was he. <laughs> and he, he was a rich man. He was a ruler. And so this, this man, Zacchaeus, didn't have natural deficits. In, in, the, in the natural, you would think that his life was was every, everything everyone else would want because he was rich. But yet, he didn't have simplicity of heart. There was something he knew he was missing. There was, there was rocks in the way. There, was, uh, th there wasn't a simplicity. There wasn't a singleness of heart. There was, there was a lot of confusion. And he, you know, in the natural, he's saying, I, I got everything I want. I got everything I need. There's nothing else that I need. But yet he... He, there was something that he didn't have, but yet he wanted, and he heard about Jesus. And you can see this story in Luke chapter 19. And because of that, what happened? It said he was, he sought to see Jesus. Now I'm going to use some of my wife's words for a moment. He was prompted to pursue because he was prepared for a change. So he knew he had to, he needed to, not only do we need to submit to the word of God like Annette talked about, but not only do we need to eliminate some things, but then, but then we have to add what needs to be added. And so he was pursuing something to lay hold of something. Because he's like, I've had all these other things and, and I'm ready to let go of that to embrace something new. And on that day, I believe he had an encounter with destiny. He sought to see Jesus. So much so that he climbed up a, a sycamore tree and it said, when Jesus came to the place. And, and when I see that he came to the place, the place, it was a set apart place. It was a prepared place that, that God had, had made available for Jesus to have an encounter with a man that was pursuing there. And he was just tired of all the things that had ruled his heart his entire life. And he was saying, you know what? I need to eliminate things because you know what? I, I, I don't have peace. I don't have simplicity. And we know the story. Jesus said, come down with haste. And it said he immediately came down and Jesus said, I must abide at your house today. Today.
And we know there was a change. And Jesus went on to, to say, and it said of him, pretty much this is why I came. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. You see, we have to come to this place in our life, in the season that we're living in, where we have a single heart, a pure heart, sincere heart. Let in our, as we continue in our first things first, as we continue going through the book of Acts, as we continue in our prayer times in the morning or whenever you choose to set aside to, to seek him in your life. I mean, I'm so, I'm so excited knowing that we have 190 people that have signed up for this challenge that we're doing. And if you haven't signed up, you can, you can go onto our church center app and sign up for it. But this is just making a, a decision that, look, Lord, we're, we're, getting, we're getting all the blockages out. We're getting all the things that, that are hindering out. And we're, we're coming to this place, Father, because we desire for the love of God to flow in our lives, but more importantly, also for the love of God to flow through our lives. And we want to be like that, that church in Acts where it said they continued daily, where they said they, 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 they broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. They were praising God. They had favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So let's eliminate and separate to get straight and just allow God to flow and move in our lives like we've never seen before. Let's make him priority. And let, let, let his love, let his love compel us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the, the rhema word that you ministered and released through Pastor Annette tonight. I thank you for the word that you've released through my mouth tonight. I thank you for what you're building, what you're working and what you're doing in, in our hearts as a church family, as a church body. Let us not be me focused as Annette shared, that, that there wouldn't be unselfishness in our hearts, but we would be God-focused and people-focused. Mm. Yeah, that some, some of the biggest hindrances in our hearts can be internal focus. Yeah. Father, we repent where we've been so me-focused. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you that as our faith grows exceedingly, I thank you that the love of every one of all of us abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And seal this word in our hearts tonight. Seal this word in our hearts tonight. Mm. Some of the greatest keys to our breakthroughs can be when we get our mind off ourselves. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you for it. Thank you for 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We'll give God praise for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Receive that word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, uh, if, you, if you desire to give tonight, if, as, we, as we give tonight or as we sow tonight, uh, you know, you can go, go to our website and follow the give prompts. You know, the text to give. Text, give, text to give is the number is 84321. Uh, you can give there. And um, we're, giving is just so, just part of, our, just part of our, our, our overflow of our heart, just giving back to God and what he's blessed us with. Amen. I just sense such a, there's such a, 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 a glory and a presence here. And I, I, hope, I, I hope that just the spirit of God is, is just ministering to you. Um, and I believe the Lord's doing something significant, significant. And, and as Annette even said, that just momentum. I, I believe that some of these messages and, and even with Dr. Savell, that just revelation is going to come forward, forward this year. That's going to cause things to speed up. So these things are, are to add to us to help bring acceleration and help to bring momentum to our lives. And, you know, and, 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 you know, as you, you know, it, it's just like that person that's carrying a lot of, lot, if, if I'm carrying a bunch of weights with me, then, then, then I, um, I can only go so fast. But when I let go of weights and I let go of certain things and I eliminate, <laughs> I love that, eliminate things, then what happens? I can go faster. I can go farther. I can, I can do more. If, if I'm trying to, if I, if, I, if I just start doing less. And I think that's a, that's, that's a word. I think there's some, there's some simplicity we need to get to in our hearts so we can go faster and go farther. Yeah. Amen. I believe that's just, a, that's just a revelation word. It's a rhema word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just uh, some announcements before we dismiss. Uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we have the food outreach. Uh, so if, um, if you're a part of that team or you want to be a part of that team, anyone can show up. Um, you know, be a part of that 500 that, that go out every month and serve in our, in our community. And, and so uh, be here at 7, uh, 7 a.m. You can help set up, be a part of that. And uh, we, uh, people start showing up at 9. Also, if you know people that need food, make sure you tell them to, to come out from 9 to 11 on, that, uh, on, that, on Saturday morning. And, um, and that way we, they can be blessed with food. Also, uh, we have Victorious Adults. Uh, they haven't, uh, this will be their first time meeting in 2022. And I know they're going to have a great time. Uh, so go ahead and for all the victorious adults, uh, 55 and older, if you haven't come to that, encourage you, come. There, it's a great way to build relationships, be encouraged by one another. And so, so you can register for that online at the Church Center app. You can register for that. You don't have to register uh, to come, uh, but it, it's great to know if you are, so, because they do prepare food and things like that, and they have a great time of fellowship and a time of the Word. Um, also, uh, Dr. Savell will be ministering this coming Sunday morning. I know we'll have a word in season that will empower our church, an apostolic word. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Uh, also, um, keep pray, continue to pray about February 27th uh, on that Sunday evening at 6, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be having an, an apostolic service with him. And it's also where we'll be coming to sow our point of contact seed uh, for our building. So we're praying about what we're, what we're to sow uh, into our building, uh, in our building um, campaign uh, project uh, about the harvest. Um, so we're doing that. Uh, just other reminders, uh, Thrive Groups are coming up on February uh, 20th. Uh, the youth are uh, having a Super Bowl party on February 13th. And also Young Adults, uh, Young Adult Heritage, Ya ja, is having a Super Bowl party as well. Uh, so if you're uh, between 18 and, uh, and, and, your, and also up to, into your 20s, I'm telling you, d get connected. Uh, you can see uh, Eric and uh, Nikki Deaton, or you can see uh, Eric and Rashida Jackson. Get more information uh, on the Church Center app uh, for that. But a lot of great things happening, a lot of awesome things going on. And I'm so glad that um, I get to call you family. We're so glad to get to call you family. Annette, come here real quick as we dismiss and pray over them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our church family. Amen. And I just thank you, Lord. We speak peace over them. I thank you for any of the, any that be, would be out driving uh, now and driving later tonight. Thank you for angels surround about yes, them. Lord. I thank you, Lord, for peace over our homes. 
protection in our homes. I thank you that every home, that everyone's heat works works the way it needs mm -hmm. to work. I thank you, God. Father, that... Yes. Um, <clears throat> that, that no pipes would freeze. That's I thank right. you, Father, for That's just right. your provision Amen. and your hand resting upon our church family. Yes, Lord. We just thank you for the time that... Well, and Lord, I just thank you for the technology that we have mm -hmm. to be able Glory to, to even do this, Lord. We thank, thank you, you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, don't forget, mm -hmm. give him Jesus.